Thank you so much to everyone who's come here tonight to listen to John Maloney talk about his artwork. Um, I will throw it over to you. Okay, hi guys. Um, I am John C. Maloney and I'm a digital artist who creates vibrantly coloured abstracts using Photoshop and Illustrator whilst listening to alternative electronic and jazz music. My artistic philosophy is creating happy aesthetics with the aim to give the viewer something visually interesting and harmonious to look at. This hopefully appeals to our love and fascination of light and colours as human beings. My background is in graphic design and higher education teaching, and I have won a number of awards for my digital artworks, which have been exhibited in several countries around the world. My digital art has also been published in several international books, and I have had several commissions for a building space. And presently, I am working with an award-winning independent collective um, in relation to this, and about to start working on a large commission for an exterior of a building in the USA. So that's a, quite a recent thing. Um, I can't tell you anything about it yet until it's fully formalized. Um, in relation to my creative practice, I've always been interested in art and design and colours and from a very early age, which led me to study and form a career in art and design. I have a master's degree in art and design education, a PGCEHE in art and design teaching, and a BA degree in audiovisual media. I originally began as an abstract painter using gouache and acrylics. Uh, around about the 1980s, 90s, which later evolved into using Photoshop and Illustrator around 1998 when I was working for a couple of advertising agencies in Washington, D.C. in the States. Since then, it has been digital the entire way. Um, firstly, I was using pho photography and Photoshop to create bot botanical digital compositions, which led luckily to winning some awards and having my work displayed in several botanic gardens around the world, including uh, Sydney, Australia, Gibraltar, and here in the UK. Uh, most of these works were based on my extensive travels around Europe and North America, I was also at the same time creating light trail and light painting photography. So I tend to mix the two things together. You know, I always like to find like different ideas to you know, put together to create something interesting. Um, I always use my own images, um, obviously to avoid copyright. It's, it's a lot easier and it's, you know, it's better to create it yourself, I think. Um, secondly, my artwork then fundamentally changed around 2020 when my dad sadly passed away which was right at the start of the COVID-19 uh, which was two days before the lockdown so this was a, a particularly tough time for me and my family and I basically needed uh, more of a optimistic creative outlet so I started so this is when I started using Photoshop and Illustrator to create more bold and vibrant artwork, artworks which were not really photography based, or just um, you know straight from working with shapes like you know hard edge paint and that type of thing. Um, and if you've seen my Instagram page, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and that actually was a good start for me as well because it led to getting my work published in an American art book. Um, and also, um, I started work. I was asked to work with an award winning art collective, an independent art collective, which, who were based in Bristol and that's in the UK, um, and um, get, get in virtual exhibitions like this one. I mean, I've had three on the run, I've been very, very lucky. And, you know, this is the third one. You know, Kirstie's obviously like my work to put, put it in there, which is great. Um, and Instagram, I think, has been like, if you, if you use Instagram, it's, it's, I think it's a great, excellent catalyst um, for meeting other, you know, talented artists um, and musicians from around the world. And, you know, it's, the, you know, the support of the artistic community is phenomenal. Um, so I think with those things going, that's, you know, made things more optimistic. Um, and to just briefly talk about the work that's in the exhibition, um, the four pieces of work that I've got in there are called Groovier Spheres. And this is an ongoing series of work uh, that I started to create in the summer of 2020 as, um, and I called them at that point, groove spheres. And they tended to be um, on black backgrounds, but for this particular um, exhibition here, I decided to like change a couple of the backgrounds to just like give a different perspective to them. 
Anyway, the concept, again, is, is based on creating happy aesthetics. There's no underlying message behind them. It's just purely about the aesthetics of colour, shape and form. Um, and in relation to the vibrant colours and shapes within the spherical surface patterns of varying sizes and combinations that encompass the boundaries between fine art and graphic design. So I'm mixing my fine art and graphic design practices together as like a whole. So I'm taking you know, the best you know, from both worlds and trying to do something you know, quite interesting with that. Um, the overall idea um, is to create a sense of um, joy, you know, uh, fun and optimism for the viewer, which hopefully gives them a sense of emotive, up-tempo, harmonious balance. Um, you know, when they look at them, you know, that's the whole idea behind it is to, you know, get people to, you know, smile, you know, as they, you know, see, you know, a vast amount of, you know, vibrant colour. Um, and as with all my um, digital artworks, uh, the creative process is always inspired by a range of musical genres. So I tend to put music on and just work to the music. And sometimes um, I'll try and finish a particular piece of digital artwork, uh, you know, as like, you know, a CD finishes or an MP3 or a record. So it's, in a sense, it kind of goes with the flow of an album or, a, you know, a compilation. So, so the works basically are about, in this, um, these groovy spheres are basically about, um, patterns within patterns that are kind of spherical and they kind of continue and then a, a repeated pattern appears as you know a whole work so in a sense it, it they almost become surface pattern designs as opposed to you know um, completely you know standalone images which they do start off as but it just I just like to evolve things and uh, you know tend to post you know the best results um on instagram i'll put them on my website and you know there's some ones that i don't post till later dates i mean i've got like a backlog of things put up there as yet so um hopefully you know people might like them in the future um so that's more or less um about me and the, my creative practice in relation to this so i'll pass you back to kirsty yes um that was really interesting to hear um it's so great to hear what was also going on as well as what you see in an exhibition <laughs> uh, you've gotten around you have <laughs> I'm, I'm so impressed <laughs> never used to be like that <laughs> <I'm> with <an> age <laughs> yeah. um and i love that you threw a little tidbit i can't tell you about that but <laughs> I cannot explain to you. I got three messages in a row going, oh, go on, just tell us something. <laughs> um, it, it'll be big. Yes. Big and colourful. Fantastic. <laughs> on the side of a building. <laughs> so, whatever it is, send me a message and I will share it. It, it sounds like it's going to be very, very good. Uh, certainly will. I mean, it's something that um, somebody contacted me, a company contacted me, you know, out of the blue, basically, and they said they found me on Instagram and they liked what I was doing and I had a look at what, you know, they, they actually build mm -hmm. and uh, what their ideas were and they give me some artists to reference and I thought, yeah, that, that'd be a really good project and they're probably, you know, the biggest thing I've created. So we're uh, in the middle of liaising that at the moment um, over the internet so it's all going to be done you know from <laughs> probably about six thousand miles apart as such so it's, yeah. it's interesting it's i'm looking forward to it that, that sounds so exciting it does uh, that's one of the joys of instagram is the community and the artistry and how easy it is to just go i want to talk to you <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's no like hello how are you doing it was just like can you do this <laughs> i love that no oh, small wow. talk let's cut that out <laughs> yeah I, th I think i think they got it over in about three sentences <laughs> no, i'm only joking oh, well, yeah. <laughs> um and we have got one question is oh everything's falling um <laughs> Why is all of your series um, in a order, in a grid order? Why is it not somewhat chaotic? Um, I think what that comes from is that because I worked as a graphic designer for a long time, mm -hmm. I saw graphic design, um, you learn to kind of be more specific with the work than if you're working, you know, as a fine artist where you can, 
you know, be more, I suppose, more flamboyant in the sense of, you know, each piece can be, you know, completely different. So with graphic design, you always have that restriction. And when you worked on briefs for clients, it was like, you know, you need to put your typography this way, you need the image this way. So in a sense, they come to like that kind of order. And I particularly like the number three, which is always yeah. everywhere I've lived as I, you know, been some kind of denomination of three. So I kind of stuck with that idea. And I kind of I quite like the way that, you know, when you look at your Instagram page, you can make it look like a piece of graphic design itself. So I tend to put like three of the same thing um, in for that reason. Um, probably one of the other reasons is that I tend to only post about once a week. So it's kind of doing three things at once. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it also does um it does show the process of how some of these designs evolve mm. from like a singular you know entity all the way through to you know maybe like a double one and then maybe a triple one which tends to start to look like a surface pattern um which which i forgot to mention i did work as a surface pattern designer many years back for about two years so i think it's stuck with me there as well mm. it's amazing just going through your practice sometimes things come around and right in the full circle some things you think you never remembered or were ever going to do again just pop back up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's good to do that because uh, I have like a backlog of design. Like I just put ideas down constantly and um, yeah. mainly go, go straight to the computer to do it. Sometimes I write them down on post-it notes and come back to them. Um, and then I just think, um, am I ready to post that? I, and they'll get distracted and, you know, put something else up you know, instead. And you'll think like, oh, that's been there for about half a year I should go back to that and you know bring it in so, so that's the aim <laughs> to mm. do <laughs> um and it's quite interesting to hear that you make art to music playing a lot of artists say they want absolute silence <laughs> because they don't want the effect of the music um and do certain music cause certain patterns or forms to emerge or colors yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I'm a musician myself. Mm -hmm. um, I have been for you know, many decades. And, you know, when you listen to music, um, especially digital music, you know, where you have your digital studios now, um, you, you can kind of quantize uh, pieces of music and you can break things down into individual notes from you know, playing it live. So it becomes more of a formula, more of a pattern. So in a sense, listen to the music when I'm you know, creating some digital work, what I tend to do is, you know, I suppose in a, in a kind of subconscious way, assign um, a sound to a colour. Yeah. Uh, you know, it'll kind of, you think, okay, that that note there or that, you know, it could be a hi-hat on a drum, it could be, you know, a synth pattern. And you think that's triggering, you know, this kind of colour or this, you know, set of colours. Yeah. So I tend to work in that kind of pattern as though, you know, I was programming a drum machine or something like that. So... It's kind of, it's an interesting way of doing it, but it, it I suppose it kind of works for, for me. Like I, I like to, I like to have that sound there because you can get lost in it. Um, and I tend to listen to more instrumental music now than I used to, because um, sometimes when, when you have vocals, you know, on the music when you're working, it, it can distract you. So with the instrumental one, you can just get completely lost in that, you know, creative process. Mm. That. Do you ever get so lost in it that you just look up and like three hours have passed? You know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Eight hours have passed. <laughs> but, um, but now, now I'm like, I'm a dad now, so I have limited time. So I think like, well, my son's at school. I've got like, you know, a couple of hours to get some work done. So it's got to be fast. So the music yeah. gets faster, the process gets faster. And then sometimes I have to go back, you know, to it later on when he's gone to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I'm sorry to hear of your father passing. Um, Thank you. We've heard how that has affected it and made you want to have brighter and more colourful. Um, how is having a son? Has that changed the like what you actually work as? Um, in a sense, yeah, because you, your time's different. Um, because like yeah, you know, there was a point where me and my wife were just like yeah, you know, we'd go out to work and now we both work from home, mm -hmm. and we balance the time around that. So uh, when one of us is looking after, uh, looking after him, then the other one can get some work done. And um, so in that sense, it, it, we've kind of just come up with a new formula of, of working, and I quite like working from home because you know it's I don't know it's cut out all those you know traffic jams I've sat in in the past, and yeah. it just makes life easier. I think, and I, I think with COVID, it's 
it's been a tough time, you know, especially, you know, as you said before about losing my dad, because that is a really difficult thing to go over, very close. Mm. Um, but he's, he was a big supporter of my art. And, you know, a lot of, there was not much happening prior to that, but then a lot of things started to happen, you know, after he'd passed. So mm. I thought, yeah, you know, that's, that's quite an interesting, you know, thing to think about. And it changed the way it worked. And, you know, I'm really happy by doing that. Yeah. What what I like to think of it is um, when when they go, that they they're still there and and there's always a sign if if they've been so supportive over something, mm-hmm. things will happen because they're there helping make things happen. Yeah, I guess. I mean, there's I mean, no one knows for sure how it all works, but yeah. you know, there are you, you do get coincidences of mm. you know certain things. Um, like um, one thing, for instance, was I was. A, I wanted to enter a competition to get into the, the art folio um, book, which is an American publication of artists. And I missed the deadline because my dad had passed. And I was, you know, I thought I'm just going to have to let it go, obviously, because it's too upset. But they actually extended the deadline and I got in. So, oh, fantastic. That kind of quite worked. And the image that's in there, somebody else saw and then asked me to join this art collective. So it, it was like kind of like a you know, string of you know, positive things coming from that. Mm. Uh, that is so great that there's been that positivity and um, and it's so good to hear that that there has been that even with lockdown with everything happening you've been able to find the more positive side of life um which as artists I, th- I think there's only one person I've spoken to that COVID has been a complete detriment to them um everyone else has managed to find some form of adaptability and something good coming out of it absolutely i mean it's it's like you've you know it's talking to your neighbors more mm. yeah because we, we've just moved about three or four years ago and we knew a handful of people now we know the whole street <laughs> you know because <laughs> you, know, you had that time where you could stand you know distance at your gate and you know talk to people that you'd not normally speak to um so i think there has been some positivity from it i mean you know it's it's bad it's a bad situation and you know there's you know there's a lot of people lost from it and you know you can't forget things like that but i think as people especially artists um i feel there's a kind of growth in the way you work from that um which is you know quite interesting and then there's a point where me and my wife both got covid and yeah. we're pretty ill with it so you know we know what it's like from that side as well so i'm um, fully vaccinated now so which is great <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> absolutely (laughs) Um, I think this is a great time to point out again um, COVID is not great to have do get vaccinated if I could put up a sign for all of you watching I'll put it here but (laughs) (laughs) I totally agree with you yes (laughs) (laughs) Um, and what advice would you give emerging artists Um, to believe in yourself um, without being conceited and to respect the work of other artists, to learn from other artists, ask questions to people. Um, don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to you know, use social media to positively self-promote yourself. Mm. Never listen to the phrase, fake it till you make it. <laughs> You'll get caught out. <laughs> um, but just to keep going, don't give up because, you know, like every artist would probably tell you and you'll know yourself, there's times you think, why am I doing this? And, you know, you, you've got to get past those because you know, you're going to have good days and bad days of being an artist. You know, days where someone will give you a great commission where you get paid a lot. You'll have days where you don't get anything. And, you know, if you truly want to do it, just stick with it and don't, don't give up on the idea, you know, and keep going and hope, you know, get support from other people as well. I think that's brilliant advice. Um, it is so true. Belief, positivity, all of that is it is it's an absolute must because sometimes you have to be your own cheerleader to get through some of the downer months. To Absolutely, get through. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like for me, I went from like a you know quite a large paying job to not much at all, and that's like a big you know change of a lot of things. But sometimes you have just got to do that. Mm. And and the great thing now is there's so many um, things open opportunities for people via social media and there's lots of things like you know print your own t-shirts and things like that. So there's all that support where you can actually start to become a brand as well as an artist. Yeah. Um, 
you know, work somewhere between artist and business person and actually, you know, start to make a career for yourself from it. Mm. And I think that's, a, you know, great times for doing that. It is. Um, I mean, we've never been at this point, really, where we've been able to do everything by ourselves. Um, and if you have that gumption, <laughs> you, you can do it. <laughs> is so possible it's true absolutely true yeah i mm. mean it's um like you're doing it now like you started your gallery and it's brilliant mm. yeah it's a great <laughs> thing to do it's, it's been so much fun at the moment I'd, i've met so many interesting people <laughs> it's <laughs> so worth doing <laughs> yeah i watched one of the interviews yesterday it was really good mm. yeah uh, we've just got a question come in um sure. when you listen to your music and make it art is there a certain process? Do you get so? Do you get everything ready beforehand, or do you switch it on and go? This is what I'm going to do. Um, what I'll do is I've I've got I'll, I'll like decide <laughs> using the day before what music I'm going to listen to because I'm new because if it's that decide the day, I'd be like, should I listen to this, should I listen to that, what am I in the mood for, you know that. So usually I have an idea, and I'll it it, it sometimes is like you know sets of things I've bought recently mm. um and so I'll go through a phase I'll listen to them for a while so um in that case I'll do it that way or even just in the mood for a particular thing a particular style or sometimes I mix it around you know it's it's kind of you know we usually time it you know before I have to do the school run <laughs> <laughs> and um is it do you start as soon as you press play or do you literally have to sit there and let it process through you before you start um it's usually quite instantaneous really because mm. I, I tend to I tend to work in sets of things and the sets are related um like the groovier spheres it ba it's basically one idea but it's you know it's like different colors within different positions and mm. um, so that it's like more you know formulaic in a sense um and you know, by doing that, it kind of helps with, you know, starting straight away because I'll, I'll think like, okay, tomorrow, um, I want to expand the idea I did yesterday mm. um, and maybe make 12 things from it. And you, I, I suppose it's setting a, a kind of a goal in a sense mm. of like, yeah, I want, I want to achieve something by the end of the day. But sometimes, you know, it doesn't come together. You know, you think like, oh man, I sat there for three hours and um, I'm back to the a blank white square. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it's been just so fascinating to be able to talk to you um, and what you can talk about, uh, what do you have coming up um, that you'd just like to quickly plug? Plug coming up, I did have something. This. <laughs> this. <laughs> do you check it um, out? <laughs> check it out, unless you are checking it out right now. Um, and thank you if you are. Um, what I was planning, um, I'm actually looking into getting some of my artworks um, um, printed up onto tote bags and onto um, t-shirts and things like that with a company called T-Mill who cre uh, creates a lot of organic things um, and yeah I want to start that side of you know the art so, mm. that, so that's that's the, the key plan that's you know what I'm right in the middle of and also um, I'm working with Jewel Street um, UK um, so I've got some work for sale on there. So I'll be adding more, you know, pieces of work. Which um, at the moment there's, there's just a couple of prints up there. But I'm going to put some gallery mounts on there as well, so people can, you know, if they're interested, you can go there and buy um, from there. And it's all it's all, you'll find all that info on me um, Instagram on the website. And um, that that sounds really exciting. Just being able to have people carry your artwork everywhere and put things into it. And... <laughs> It would be good. <laughs> There's a few pre-orders. Um, a couple of people said, "Can you can you make this for me?" And they think I'm being lazy, but I said, "No, I'm juggling a lot of things. It'll be coming soon." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> keep an eye out. <laughs> yeah, you can have it for Christmas. <laughs> well, thank you for being here today and talking to us about your art, and thank you for being a part of the exhibition. Without you guys, it wouldn't be. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much, Kirsty. I really appreciate it. Thank you for putting me in there. Thanks for the interview. You know, it's, it's great. You're doing a great thing. Thank you. And everyone listening, um, whether live or catch up, do make sure to follow John on Instagram. Uh, you will not be disappointed. I love the way that 
you curate your Instagram feed. It's not just random posts. It's thought out. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's thought out. <laughs> and I'm just going to sit here for 30 seconds. Um, I have just put a link into the chat box and I've actually pressed attendees and panelists this time <laughs> um, <laughs> for the link for the next artist talk, which is happening in four minutes time with Lilian Camier, um, a French artist that we had to reschedule from Monday night due to extenuating circumstances. And it has the passcode right there. Um, so I'm just going to sit here for 10 seconds. Uh, make sure to click it, otherwise you have to go to our website and go the long way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a countdown. Yes. <laughs> SpaceX launch. <laughs> but, anyway, thanks, thanks very much, Kirsty. No worries. Thank you so much for being here and have a good evening. Yeah, thanks, guys. Take care. See you Bye. soon. <laughs>